did this wrong the first time I'm, I did it, so I'm going to do it again in the right angle so that it's not looking weird. Anyway, welcome to the weaving portion of Karn and Reese's Adventures. Now, I started weaving officially October, uh, which was only like three months ago, three or four months ago. Anyway, um, I've had this loom for a long time, but I hadn't actually started weaving yet. And I'm wondering around getting my coffee, by the way, so that's, that's terrible lighting. Okay. Anyway, um, so this is going to be done in, in sections so that you can follow along while I do an, a complete project end to end. Um, I know that there's a lot of information out there about weaving, uh, specifically on a rigid heddle loom. The, the community is fantastic, but sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. So I'm going to try and break it down a little bit, um, keep it a little bit interesting, and hopefully we can make something together and um, you'll find this helpful. So this is a Kromsky 32 inch rigid head of loom. Now when I bought mine 10 years ago, 8 years ago, um, it was just a Kromsky harp. Beautiful construction, beautiful uh, finish on it, but the Ratchet and Paul system, and I'll point that out here, that is this area that holds the the tension on the loom, or your tension for your fiber, was plastic. And in the time that I had this in storage and pulled it out, they have upgraded to the Kromsky Forte, or it's a Harp Forte, excuse me, and they changed out the plastic Ratchet & Paul for metal ones. So I was able to purchase those and upgrade them. The other thing that my husband has done for me is I noticed that I was having an issue with tension, and this is always a thing with weaving, tension is an issue, um, and it had to do with these here. And this is literally what your your um, warp threads are going to be attached to. And with the harp, they come in a wooden dowel. This was bending. <laughs> Maybe I used too much tension. I like tension. Um, so he swapped them out for me with um, aluminum rods. So they're solid rods. They don't bend. And you can get them at the hardware store, which is a beautiful thing. Okay, answer the question of what is a rigid heddle loom, specifically. Rigid heddle loom means that this piece right here, which is your heddle, is firm, and it has a firm eyes and holes, or slots, right? You use this not only to adjust the shed, which, which is which threads are up and which ones are down, but you also use it to beat, which is where you pull it forward to gently uh, push the fibers together, the warp and the weft. Pull the heddle off, which is just, it sits there, so you just take it out. And I did that because I want to flip it over. I'm going to show you one of the ways that we create a warp. One of the ways is to use a direct warping method, um, and I'll show you that to actually warp this time. But I want to show you that the Kromsky is a little unique in that it has a built-in warping board, which is a way that you can put pegs in it and then wrap your warp around it to the length that you want, and then you transfer that onto the loom. And I'm going to flip it over and show you how that's done. Now you'll notice that the stand has wing nuts, so you can just undo the wing nuts, flip it over, use the same stand to use as your warping board. So just give me a second, I'll be right back. There you go, you can see that there are pre-drilled holes, and they're actually pegs, I have them downstairs, we're not gonna use them today, so I won't worry about it. But you can then put the pegs in the holes, and doing the count off to actually create a warp. At some point on this channel, I will go through that process with you. It's not something that I'm really strong on at this point, so I do have to learn and get better at it. So we'll do that together. Not today. <laughs> thing I wanted to point out before we start warping. 
and start planning what we're going to make. On your rigid heddle, this one is a 10 point, which means that for every inch, there is either a slot or a hole, and the total number per inch equals 10. So what I've done so that I can see exactly what I'm warping is I counted out 10 slots and 10 holes, made sure they were an inch, and marked out very clearly where the center is, and did it all the way across. Now, yes, it really, really bothered me at the beginning marking up my loom, but in truth, it's actually made it so much easier, so much better, and definitely worth doing. So it's good to know where your threads are going at all times.